Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Perspectives. We're going to present to you today perspectives on various subjects that are close to our hearts and to the well-being of our community. The subject of this program is education. Education, as we all know, is a basic requirement for a thinking, well-functioning, and productive society. The first guest for this program is Ms. Aisha Tsoli. She is the principal of Tajuddin School, who has worked in the education sector for 26 years. And she's been the principal for the last six years. Well, today we have as our first guest, Ms. Aish Soli. She's been an educator for about 26 years now as a teacher and then uh, about six years as principal of a school in Mali. And I believe in that sense, Ms. Ashut Soli, you have a great, big, big amount of uh, experience that you can relate to us today. I hope we can have a good chat. Let me ask you first a question about how your experience has been as regards uh, the whole purpose of education being to improve the lot of society. Has that process happened in Maldives? We see education has gone on for about 60 years, 50 years now, since we began the modern way of education. Yeah, when we talk of education, we first see a child. To me as a teacher, as a principal, I see the child. And we want that particular child to come out in the society as a competent, a productive, a successful adult. That's what we want as a child. And uh, in the schools, what we have to do is to, we have to uh, holistically develop the child to be that particular child we want in the society. Uh, referring to the question you asked, um, are we achieving it? We say we, are, we have to achieve it. That's what we have to do as educators, as individuals, as uh, policy makers. So in, when we look at uh, the education system, and the curriculum and other stuff that we use as educators. We see the curriculum as the basis for it. When we look at the old curriculum and how we were being taught, and when I think of my uh, schooling, and when I think of the schooling of this present generation, I see a lot of changes, a lot of positive changes, as well as certain negative changes also. So yeah. tell us some of those, please. When, we, when I, I'll be referring to my personal experience as a student and as an educator. When I think of my school days, I remember being in a classroom. A teacher comes inside and she would greet us, come with a piece of chalk and turn back to the board and start writing something. And while she writes or he writes on the board, keeps on asking a few questions. And Soon we see uh, all lot of notes on the board, and that is what we have to copy. There isn't much of an activity type of work in the, inside the class. So we keep on copying it. What is copied is after the school uh, end of the uh, session, we go home. That's what we have to study at home. And that part or that lesson is later being tested as, as an exam. And the result we get is what we what, what the teacher see as the student so uh, so so essentially you're talking about uh, rote learning exactly a process by which you uh, tell a child mm -hmm. or give a lesson to a child and then that child reproduces that in an exam exactly. and to the degree that he or she is able to do that she gets a B or a C or an A mm -hmm. now that is a very traditional form of education mm -hmm. And I believe most of the countries in the world are doing that. But, but as we move into the 21st century, do you think that's the kind of way we need to be doing? What, what, what is it that needs to be changed? I think the manhaj that you have a new one, which has uh, a lot of bearing on, on a change I, process. I think uh, Aishat has pointed out something very interesting, which is the, the system that she was a part of when you were a student. Exactly. And what it is today, we have 
transitioned over a long period mm -hmm. of time. Obviously, uh, the system that you refer to as a child going to school were the system that existed in most countries in the region. Mm -hmm. Because we adapted English medium education to this country mm -hmm. from our regional neighbors. Exactly. And our teachers were essentially Mostly. people mm -hmm. from those countries. And therefore, what they brought with them was the system that was mm -hmm. the beginning of the evolution. So time and uh, facilities, um, technology, all these factors mm -hmm. have a strong bearing on the way we deal with mm -hmm. the thing called transfer of knowledge. Am I right? Exactly. You are right. So, so what we see is that the, the, uh, the students who come out from the school is not that particular student we need in the job market. We require for the nation, we require for the uh, uh, country's future. So there's a need for a change in the way how we deliver our lessons inside the classroom. That means before that we need this Mannaj or the curriculum to be revised, changed. But it was the same thing, it is in a revised form. Um, what I find is uh, mainly in the new curriculum or oh, what we really need is the pedagogical uh, activities that we ca carry out inside the classrooms. Mm -hmm. That has to be changed and this new curriculum talks about it, talks about it. Our job is to see that it is done inside the class and we produce that child we want. Right. So that's a very good point she's making. Obviously, uh, obviously you are making a good point, Mus yeah. uh, Mustafa. Uh, I mean, I, I like the point she makes about the changes that has happened, yet you need to do the changes in the classroom. And that probably is the biggest challenge. Don't I, you think, I think so? Th that's one of the points that I also wanted to raise, you know, uh, as Apsatar has pointed out. You see, what's happening here is uh, there are challenges now because we have changed the uh, curriculum. Uh, but the content seems to be still lingering on, uh, more or less the same. The delivery of the knowledge, the methodology we use, and the environment where we do it, and the environment beyond the school, mm -hmm. these are factors that we have to consider. Mm -hmm. I think that brings to the fact that there is a greater role of parents and home in providing a well-rounded education <coughs> to the child. Isn't that what we are striving for? Of course, we need the help of the parents, we need the help of the uh, communica community and others uh, around us. So what we deliver inside the class has to be actually practiced by the students at home. And the home setting should be in a way that they are able to practice and use and apply all the knowledge they carry. It is not only the knowledge and the content actually we should be, I mean, worried about or concerned about. What I really feel is the attitude part is much, much more important than the knowledge and the content. Unless we change the attitude of the person or the student, and nothing, nothing comes out. That's right. I, I think she's a very, very valid point here. But how do you change the attitude? That's a big question. Yes. See, we see most of us go to school to learn something. It's a process of learning information, getting information. But the information has to turn into what they call intelligence, I think. Mm. And that intelligence makes information meaningful to us mm. to be able to live our lives in a way that we want to live. So into getting that intelligence part happen, there has to be a big part of it in the way you teach. Mm. And I think you mentioned that this classroom methods are mm. a major part of what you want to change. But that's the challenge. And how those who are going to teach, do they have the capacity also? It, it, it's so much of a complex situation this is. But I think you've taken a good step forward. But let's see as a principal how do you make that now because that's a big part of it i, I think principal. it's only two years mm. since the yeah new this is the second year uh -huh. yes uh, uh, obviously um as uh, aishat has pointed out there had been a system in place for a very long period yes. of time and the teachers who have been trained mm. have been trained to deliver 
their lessons more or less mm -hmm. in the guise of that particular mm -hmm. curriculum. And uh, the methodology have been more or less molded and remolded into the same shape. Yes. So it's, it, it will take a little while course, before, yes. before, but the important thing is, as you have hinted, it is the responsibility of the teachers to, to become uh, a part and parcel of mm. that particular curriculum delivery agent. Exactly. When, when I say the attitude part, mm -hmm. it will only come from a value system. That's what I personally believe. That value system would actually can, should start from home, home, even from the child as, a, a, as an infant. And then we try to teach and develop whatever uh, whatever absolutely. skills that is to do with the attitude. Very much when so. we when we talk about education, it's to do with three main things. First thing is the uh, knowledge they need to know about what's going around and what they need to learn in for in, in future. And the next one is the attitude part. And then comes um, the value system that should go along with them. Value means I, I, I think you we all understand. We all understand. You know, it's the understand. moral moral part I, I of shall, what shall we. Shall we leave these two important points for the moment, and we take a little break, and we come back and we talk about value system and attitude in educational delivery of education, knowledge, imparting information, empowering children to face the world. Please be with us. Welcome back to the program. As we were talking a little while ago, we were talking about values and attitudes. Obviously, value means that it is a system that is caught around the child, which is built around the child, which creates the child to understand and appreciate values. The first cradle is at home, and then the child comes to the school environment. Obviously, as educators, as the custodians of the children in th within the school, you are confronted with a half a challenge. Okay. I think uh, we would be very much inclined to invite our parents also to think along with us. Mm -hmm. How much do you wish the parents should participate in cultivating an environment for the child to appreciate what is being delivered to the child in the form of a formal learning environment? Of course, uh, before the knowledge, before the skills uh, we want to develop in them, is the value that should be inside them, inculcated, instilled in them. When they come to school or classrooms, there should be some prior uh, knowledge or skills along with their attitudes that we check or the class teacher should see. So those things if it is not in the proper shape, it's really difficult for the teacher, especially a new teacher, for, to see what kind of a student he or she is, what kind of uh, uh, help or guidance the student need. But if it, it, when we compare with a student who come from, a, um, let's say, from, a, from good parents, uh, and a student who come from a difficult home, I should say, is quite, quite different. But the challenge with uh, the school management or the system is not every teacher is competent enough to understand this, mm. to see each child as a different child who would have different values, different skills, I mean, uh, an amount of knowledge they have already acquired. So I believe that value part and the attitudinal part is mainly um, they learn actually from home and come. And once it is, I mean, engraved as an attitude or uh, discipline at home, it's really difficult for the child, I mean, the teacher in the class to change the child into a different personality. So that has to be addressed from the school to the parents about how important it is to be a good parent, how important it is to be a good role model, I should say. We are talking about a student to be a, a good discipline. That's a very valid point, yes. Good, good uh, student. When we say good, there are so, so many things that is involved, in our, like being uh, trustworthy, being respectful, trying to be the best child, I mean, talking positively to, pay, uh, to others, 
moving around with uh, uh, others and working in groups. These are certain things that the teacher has to do inside the class. Without proper attitude, it, the teacher finds it difficult to I mean, manage the classrooms. So we need the help of the parents. Not all parents see these things in this the, the way we want the, uh, pay, uh, we want the school to see inside the class in inside the home. But as you have a very good mechanism in school, and I guess most schools also you have the parent teacher associations. I think that's a point where the teachers and the parents meet to talk about these mm -hmm. things. H how have you been uh, seeing the experience in in our country in that? In your experience, for instance, it's very important to have a parent-teacher communication. I mean, effectively done inside the class. But it's uh, it's a pity to say this when we arrange meetings and interactions for teacher and parents. It is not uh, very supportive nowadays. Uh, it's uh, I, I find it very difficult to say it, but it's a fact. It's a fact. Yes, a fact should be highlighted in uh, yes. things like this. So. Mainly the parents whom we really want, we really find it hard to get in Even touch. Even harder to get. Yeah. That, that happens. So uh, we need to educate the parents as well. We, 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 we don't uh, expect the parents to be like teachers because teachers are professionally developed Absolutely. for the, for the yes. profession. Parents are not. So, but unless they are ready to be with us, uh, we can't help them. Mm -hmm. What so would we, be the role of uh, holistic uh, education? Uh, in terms of uh, the way you perceive it, uh, where do the parents come in and what should be the role of the parents? If, what would you wish the parents to ask you? Yes, holistic education or the development means they should be fully developed physically, mentally, spiritually, in, in three, four ways. They should and it be should developed. be a uh, cultivation of a, uh, a very important quality called responsibility. Exactly. Seeking out for truth, mm -hmm. these are values mm -hmm. that uh, the child has to be uh, uh, cultivated within an environment, within the school and at home. Spiritual development should start from at home, the, as, as I just mentioned about value system. Spiritually means they should be, I mean, believe in our religion. They should be knowing, I mean, students should be knowing the purpose of praying and the purpose of believing in Allah and uh, I mean, following uh, prophets' and uh, the guidance. And yes, all these kind of things. That cannot be actually uh, done Run inside the, the class. Yeah. That is a simple thing that yes. can be, I mean, yes. practiced at home and, and instilled by the parents if the parents actually know the importance of it, how much they can do at home. I think that should be addressed. There are so much of things that can be addressed at home that can be helped by the parents to the student. Like well, so I, I'd like to intervene here. Now, the parents' role is uh, unequivocal, I mean, unquestionable, right? I mean, there's no un non-negotiable, right? You have to yes. have that role. But um, <clears throat> I wouldn't want to talk about spirituality in that sense, but at least be good, show good behavior, good show, show good attitude. As you say, show good values, how to deal with people, how to talk to people, how to interact and how to receive, uh, you know, a compliment mm. or, or say things that you want to say in a nicer way than, mm. than demand. And learn you know, to be thankful. Things mm, like grateful. that. I mean, those are, those are a part of religion. Yes. But we don't want to say it is religion. But these are values that come from some moral background. Right, so that part. So parents have, to, but I, I mean, I I want to just dwell on something of how the schools can make parents become more involved with the world. What we normally talk about is what I really personally feel also is that parents should be the role model. Should, what the child, what what we want the child to do, the parents sh should do at home. Instead of telling them, advising them, they should at least say when we talk about punctuality. Parents should be able to do things on time. When we say respect the neighbors, we should be uh, the child should be seen the parent having good relationship with the neighbors. When we say uh, uh, parents should be, I mean, uh, uh, having a clean environment, the home environment should be clean. Then only they they, they should be able to see what they are able to do. I think you know class. we have come to the end of this uh, segment. 
uh, uh, you have covered a lot of important points. I think we have raised some in yes. important issues, but this is an enormous subject. That's right. So we but you being an educator also, you are an educator. You began uh, your uh, youthful time. We are not old, but <laughs> youthful time in, in trying to promote education. Now, there, there is this question about what education is also. Is it about going to school and learning information, or is it a confluence of all these values that we learn? Somebody said we learn but, everything. But I, I have to ask you to excuse me, because you are asking a very big question. It's a but very we have big run question. Out of time. Okay, run out of time. Very I have had to speak to you volumes of okay, this. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for being a part of our program. And uh, those who have been watching us, we hope we have brought some points that require a certain amount of contemplation in the future. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Ast, for, for giving us the time. Us the time. I think uh, you you're doing a very noble job. Keep up the good work. And I'm sure things work slowly, okay. <laughs> but it will finally happen if you have your intentions. Thank right. you very much Thanks. again. It's my pleasure too. Yes. And our second guest is Dr. Ahmad Anwar. As you all know, he is the rector of Villa College, and he's been in the education field for perhaps about 40 years. Who is going to be also speaking on the same subject. Uh, Anwar, we are discussing a subject which is very close to every family, which is education. And there is a responsibility also on the entire community in educating people. It cannot be passed on to one particular segment of the community or it should not be made the responsibility of uh, the schools alone. What would you have to say that if you are to provide a holistic education, what should be the understanding of the subject like? Thank you very much uh, for asked me to come for this program. Uh, as for education, what is, what is it? What is holistic education? Well, what do we understand when people ask or tell about holistic education? I think uh, basically it's uh, just a bit more than what's go what goes on in the classroom. Uh, that just pure learning in the classroom, pure in the sense uh, you're given a curriculum or other textbook or whatever is given lesson. And you learn, that's, that's basically formal part of it. But then we do so many other things apart from classroom teaching and learning. What else do you do in school or even outside? Uh, if you take the, everything that's, I think, holistic education. Well-rounded. It, 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 well, it's, it's, yes, it's well-rounded. It's outside the classroom. It can be inside a school. It can be with extracurricular activities or co-curricular activities. Sometimes you refer, to, refer them uh, to as. Uh, or it can be what teachers, the kind of stories they, they relate to you, tell you, all these things. In, we, we always, we say, we have two, two sides of it, curriculum. One is uh, the formal curriculum, which is uh, in the textbooks, uh, rather, the formal document. And then we also have a curriculum which is not seen. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as unwritten. Uh, uh, unwritten. It's sometimes called hidden curriculum. Hidden curriculum, yes. Uh, so, you know, uh, what, what is it that you give the child? Apart from the lessons, or, or I refer to lessons, so, you know, it's just bookish, uh, all that is in written, the books, and then uh, the, the, what goes on in the classroom, basically. Then apart from uh, classroom teaching, the students uh, stay in school under the guidance of uh, the teachers sometimes, or even other staff and uh, you send them to uh, play games. Sometimes it's inside school, sometimes it's outside. Outside the school. Uh, so it's, it's, it's everything. Absatar, I think uh, what uh, Anwar is referring to, 
are the things that are important for the child to become a thinking person, a searching person, uh, and a useful person. These are the factors that are essential to the uh, educational process that the child is exposed to. Right. This is very important. And I think uh, in, a, in an earlier segment also we, we looked at this. Really you are preparing the child for life in a school. And uh, you having been extremely well steeped in the educational system, way back in the primary, secondary educational system also, you know that you have to prepare these kids for the future, for life. And that's probably what I gather that you say, what is uh, holistic education. It's a lot about attitude also, beyond yes. just the knowledge that you learn in school, in the classroom, the didactics, as you say. Uh, I'd like to, uh, I mean, if you, unless you don't want to dwell on this further, but I'd like to say something about how you see our kids beyond, I mean, uh, life is still ahead. Okay. After high school, again, you have to go. So you as the, you know, the coordinator of a, of a university system, how do you see the children who are coming out of high school? Are they prepared enough adequately for the challenges of the university? As, as, as the recipient of <laughs> those students, you know, I, I yes, think uh, that's what I mean. you, you would be yes, facing uh, a lot of uh, realities there. This is, this is very interesting, actually. Uh, I don't think uh, we ever, we not, not ever, but perhaps uh, we don't think uh, adequately on this area of child development. Uh, uh, we are not only the schools or parents, but most of us are concerned about uh, what I referred to earlier as classroom teaching. Uh, that I don't think is sufficient for, uh, as you said, lifelong learning or uh, for prepare a child for the future. Uh, I don't think that that is uh, sufficient. Uh, there we have a problem actually in this country, a uh, very serious problem I think. That is, uh, we, I, I wouldn't say we don't have a curriculum, but we certainly don't have a as a uh, secondary school curriculum, uh, our own, I mean. We, we okay. do GCE level, A level and so on, but uh, we don't have our own curriculum. So we are preparing students for an examination, hmm. which I don't hmm. think is uh, going to prepare them, uh, which I don't think which will s that, that will uh, prepare them for uh, mm, the changes or the life that he is going to live after school. In a more even context. In the more even context. Yes, I, in the I think that's, in the, that's in the part of exactly. Exactly. Good that context. you pointed out this. In the more even context. But our, we, we have had a primary curriculum for now, uh, for a reasonable period of time from 1984 onwards. We have a uh, national curriculum for up to, uh, from primary up to grade seven. Uh, we say we call it grade grade one to seven, so we 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 have ni that is also from 1984, and uh, beyond grade seven, we just prepare our students for an examination, either Cambridge or London. Right. I think we are uh, at a very important mm -hmm. point. Uh, before we go to a break, mm -hmm. uh, you have pointed out something very important, which is the relevance of the the, the curriculum we are following in the secondary level how relevant it is for our requirement, how much is it, it, it takes into account of our own culture and our demands. Mm -hmm. So we should be taking a short break and we'll be back with you. Do stay with us. Welcome back to the program. We were, when we went for the break, talking to uh, Dr. Anwar about the higher education and how we can make the primary education or the secondary education more relevant to the context that we face in Maldives. So let me ask you, uh, Anwar, yes. Yes. Uh, let's dwell on this a little more because I think this is very critical because the point you raised is uh, it, it, it tells us 
of a lack. And what we want to do in our programs is to promote and improve on the lack, right? To make a change. So if you say that we need to uh, make some changes in a secondary education curriculum or, or whatever, uh, what are the kinds of inputs do you think that will make it more relevant to the context of Maldives and not just uh, prepare children to pass the exam? I, I think, uh, first of all, we had to see the system and understand that, as you put it rightly, that there is something lacking in it, in our system. So I think, uh, I think to begin with, we'll have to ac accept or believe in that this is, this is it. There is need for it. There is ne yes, need yes. for it. Uh, then I think uh, since it is a system that's prevalent for several years now, since we started uh, what was called English medium education or British colonial education, mm -hmm. we, we haven't given the thought to it, I think. Our, our kids sit for the GCE or A-level examinations. And, and it is so natural, I think, that we take a London curriculum. Uh, or syllabus, I don't call it a curriculum, but London syllabus or Cambridge syllabus. Uh, but if, you know, as, as long as you take uh, London and Cambridge examinations, I don't think uh, we can bring about a major change to, our, to the secondary curriculum or what is we was taught in secondary schools. Uh, what I have been advocating right now is, oh, not right now, uh, while I quite a while, uh, now. quite a while, when I st worked at Ministry of Education, is that it's time that we think of uh, of our own examination board. Department of Higher Education is our examination center, of course, uh, but we establish examination board, and then we we promote it. So that, uh, you know, pe uh, it's not that difficult either to promote it because uh, this, to begin with, it up to grade 10, lower secondary. Then if you, if you, ha if you have a, if you have a problem or if you are not so uh, comfortable about what your program, then of course take your A-levels, if you, a London or Cambridge A-levels. I, I think this A-level also has been modified uh, yeah, now. Yes, 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 yes. Over yes. the years. Well, it, well, it's time. Now, yes, we've we been doing this uh, for so many years now. Exactly, it's it's yes. time for us to think about Th there uh, are some, examination. You know, there are some historic realities also mm -hmm. in this. Why this particular syllabus or the uh, London O-Level or Cambridge O-Levels, they have dragged on this far. There are historic realities. Mm -hmm. We have to acknowledge that. That's right. First of all, we need to have a very educated community in the country to think about from a national angle mm -hmm. until not so long ago. That's right. People who became directly involved in education, were, numbers were few. And we had to depend on our education from foreign teachers. And these teachers came along with, with the, these with syllabuses the, with in the their same heads. Syllabus in that, yeah. And we had to adapt it because at that time, it was a major transition the country had perceived. Right, right. So these were the realities. But as uh, Anwar has pointed out, mm -hmm. now it's about time that we start thinking about a change for the secondary education, our of our own relevant syllabus or a curriculum. Yes, I, I think there are lots of intellectuals now in the education mm -hmm. sector who can think uh, and uh, I, create these changes. Yes, no? Exactly. Uh, we also have a national university, I think. National university also can, can, undertake, can this. undertake this. Yes. That's right. Very uh, much so. I, you know, it, it, was, it used to be London University uh, uh, curriculum or syllabuses. Now I think uh, Maldives, Maldives National University has got adequate uh, facilities right. and right. Uh, perhaps uh, staff uh, who, who are able to undertake this task. So, so uh, I mean, we have, we have a lot of intellectual capacity to undertake this. Yes. 
it's a matter now, of time now. It, it's, it, it's, it, it's time now yes. that we should do it. Time is the, right. The, the question really, what I want to ask you is, as, a, as not an educator myself mm -hmm. in that sense of mm -hmm. uh, schools, yeah. uh, what are the changes that need to be in, incorporated in, in this? What kind of, uh, what are we talking about really beyond just the subjects? Uh, are there some things to do with uh, community work and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, understanding our community, writing proposals? Now, some, some schools have this thing about writing a whole paper on, on uh, the social aspects, helping society. You are made to do a project on, on, on some social aspect. That steeps the child then into that area and knowing their community and what the community needs for the future. Uh, I mean, I'm just uh, trying to throw it out to you. Uh, I, but is, is there something I, like I, that? I'll, I'll take an example. Mm -hmm. When we started uh, community schools in the out in the atolls, that was in 19, late 1970s, uh, people saw it not so relevant in a community school system, the tea, the classroom teaching and all that. Uh, one of the schools I remember is uh, Baito Education Center, I, I, uh, where I worked for three, about two to three years. Uh, people said what is taught in community school is not relevant. They say, oh, no, they come out several arguments saying this is, the, the kids don't know this and that. Uh, and they keep on, uh, you know, uh, several come come forward all, with all the details, you know, things that the kids are unable to do it, which which means the 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 the, the education which was given or rather the teaching that was conducted in the schools were not seen as relevant to the people in the community. This is why. so you know we had to change it. Uh, change a bit, but we can't change the curriculum completely. Uh, we, uh, we had the advantage of not having a proper curriculum at that time. That's so we right. were able to, I was, uh, when I came, when I went there in uh, 1984, uh, I think, uh, I had to make adjustments to suit the needs of the people. Uh, now, that is what uh, we, we can do. You know, think. Anwar has uh, pointed out something very important, but unfortunately we have run out of time. Oh my goodness, yes. Mm. This subject is enormous. I think we might have to ask you to uh, <laughs> yes. join us later in a different program. Uh, we yes. wish thank you for being a part of our program and uh, sharing and giving your insights to the subject. And a person who has worked over 40 years in the education sector, and now you are at the helm of a um, tertiary education institution. Yes. And we wish you very best. And uh, we hope that in the future you'll be a part of this program. Thank you very much uh, for asking me to come for this program uh, and then have this. Uh, Most welcome. It's, it's a pleasure, really. Uh, it's we a, we it's have a only scratched. For me, uh, to be part of your team and then, you know, contribute in a small way, perhaps. Thank no, you very much. You. No, I think it's very good. And very we good. wish you, you a pleasant day and wish you all the best. We hope to see you again with uh, Perspectives. Mm -hmm.